So I recently made a video where I talked about different activities that you could partake in if you were interested in the dark academia aesthetic. And one of my lovely subscribers suggested that I make a video of 55 light academia activities. So that's what this video is. That being said though, if you have not seen my other video, I will put it up here. I recommend you check it out after this video or even right now before you watch this because most of the activities that are in that video you can definitely do that still exist in the world of light academia. Before we get started, I'm going to read you off the definition of light academia just so you fully understand what it is before I even talk about the things that you can do. Light academia is the emotionally positive and visually lighter relative of dark academia. The style inspiration for both is rooted in literature. However, the differences between their fashion choices boil down to the color palette, beige versus black, and the fabrics, lightweight versus cozy. Light academia is very much about positivity and self-care, seen through the social aspects involved such as hanging around bakeries, bookshops, libraries, and cafes. It can be seen as similar to the cottagecore aesthetic, although it has more of a focus on education. It is all about warm and pleasurable parts of life. It still embodies the love of learning, but with an airier, less doom-focused feel that shows that knowledge brings light and happiness in the outdoors. Think light academia as more of uh, Epictetus, not so much Albert Campus. So you will find that some of the activities I mentioned here, I did mention in the other video, but most of them are completely new activities that I have not mentioned before, and I felt they were just perfect for the LA aesthetic. So let's get started with number one. The first one is to go listen to a large instrumental ensemble of classical music, otherwise known as a symphony. Go to a symphony, an orchestra. The Philharmonic Orchestra does travel around. I recommend you Google them because they actually compose during movies and play the actual songs from the movie you were watching on the screen while you're watching it. The next one is visiting a butterfly atrium and draw the butterflies. The third one is to go to the botanical gardens and read a book. Or you can have a picnic. I've done that before too and honestly it's so beautiful. You see the bees collecting the pollen and you see butterflies and there's a whole array of insects that kind of crowd gardens and it's very lively. The fourth one is to learn to garden and particularly edible foods, so that way you can end up eating them when they are in full bloom. The fifth one is to visit a poppy field. Number six is to make homemade loose leaf tea. You actually don't even have to make tea, the specific element that tea is. You could just steep something like pine needles or wildflowers without the tea element and it's very simple to do all you do is you pick some herbs you can even buy them from the store but if you do pick them fresh you allow them to dry in the sun you crush them down in a mortar and pestle and then you put them into a tea bag and let them steep in hot water a tea that i've made before is lavender tea and guava tea number seven is to walk to your local library or your closest bookstore the reason I say walk is because light academia is about incorporating nature with literature, so going for a walk and being outside is a great way to combine the two. Number eight is have afternoon tea. Now afternoon tea can get a little pricey if you go to an actual place to do it, so you always have the option to make it at home. You can make cucumber sandwiches, egg sandwiches, salmon, um, tuna. It's very easy. They're, the recipes for these sandwiches are incredibly simple, and it's also a great way to entertain guests. Number nine is to write a love letter by ink and quill to your favorite fictional character. I was thinking about this a lot because I was like, oh, who am I in love with? And I feel like it would have to be either Edward from Twilight or it would have to be Augustus Everett from Beach Read. <laughs> Go to the mountains, the forest, the side of the road even, wherever you can find them and pick some wildflowers to display in your home. Memorize Shakespeare quotes. Study French. And I say French because it's such a romantic language and I feel like it goes perfectly with light academia, but honestly, 
you can study any language because the academic aesthetic is all about learning. So whatever language you choose to study is totally up to you, but I just wanted to say French specifically. Next time it rains outside, make sure you go dance in it. Number 14 is make a point to read books like Pride and Prejudice, Little Women, Anne of Green Gables, the classics that are a little bit romantic or maybe a little bit more cottagecore or that have a passion for learning. Number 15 is to decorate a reading space with fairy lights. Number 16 is to learn piano or even the violin or harp. But as I said before, I'm saying very specific things for these activities, but if you have an instrument that you already love to learn and play, then keep with that one. Number 17 is to visit a museum to read or study. Number 18 is to go to an art gallery and sketch your favorite work. Number 19 is to have a picnic in a park or in the forest and make sure you bring your books. Number 20 is to join a poetry club. 21 is to join a book club. Number 22 is to find a pen pal and start exchanging letters. Number 23 is to head to your favorite cafe by foot and buy a nice pastry or tea or coffee and then walk home. Now, of course, your cafe might not be super close to you, so if it's not, then make sure when you drive to one, you park a little farther away so you can enjoy the walk there, enjoy the historical buildings or nature, whatever is surrounding you at that exact moment. Number 24 is to go thrifting and get a vintage teacup that you can use all the time. Number 25 is to make French press coffee or What's the other one called? Pour over coffee? Pour coffee? Drip coffee. 26 is to walk to your local little library. And if you don't know what this is, these are libraries that are contained with the neighborhoods that the neighbors put up in front of their yards, or sometimes you'll see them in coffee shops or on the side of the road. And what you do is you go there and you can get a book for free, or you can also choose to exchange an old one that you have. This is a great way to kind of donate a book and get something new in return. Number 27 is next time it rains, go for a walk and listen and notice all the sounds that come alive around you, specifically when it starts to rain. Number 28 is to watch some light academia movies like Anne with an E, The Queen's Gambit, Bridgerton, oh, that's such a good one, Pride and Prejudice, just some of the classic movies. 29 is to take a little drive into the city and explore some of the historical buildings that the town has to offer. Number 30 is to start writing some poetry. 31 is to listen to classical music. It's a plus if you have a record player or a gramophone, but if you don't, just listening to music in general definitely sets the mood. A composer that I really like is Piero Piccioni. I actually don't know how to pronounce that correctly, but yeah, such good light academia music. Number 32 is to visit a cathedral. Number 33 is to lie in the grass and bask in the sun. 34 is to go to a poetry reading. 35 is to visit Shakespeare in the park. And yes, they do have this and it is free. 36 is to start writing short stories. 37 is to sketch some historical buildings. Number 38 is to participate in a plain air painting class, or you can just go do this on your own. Number 34 is to join a theater or drama club. There's a lot of people that do these and you can find them on Facebook groups very easily. Number 40 is to visit the opera. Number 41 is to make a point to start making dinner from scratch by candlelight. Number 42, study the architecture in Greece. Number 43 is to take a walk in nature on a nice day through the forest or in a park and just think about your goals. 44 is to read at night by candlelight. Number 45 is to learn more about your favorite author. 46 is to create a light academia space within your home. I made a video doing this if you wanna check it out here and this is a great way to really feel like you are immersed in this aesthetic. Number 47 is to dry press flowers. 48, swim in a lake or visit your local hot spring. You might have to drive for this one, but doing this is so therapeutic and beautiful. Just being able to lay in this foreign body of water, even if other people are around, it is still an amazing experience, just kind of embracing what nature is. Number 49 is to go on a photo walk. If you don't know what this is, it's a group of people that get together, they all bring their cameras and they go down a nature trail and they take photos of the same things. Number 50 is to hike somewhere historical. Believe it or not, there are a lot of historical places that are on 
were off hiking trails. There was this place that I used to hike all the time and after a year of hiking there, I discovered that it used to be this old estate back in the 20s and they used to have huge parties there and they had their own cemetery and you could still see parts of it off of the trail and I just never noticed and it was really cool to learn about the history of somewhere that I had been so many times. If you look up historical hiking spots, you are guaranteed to find something super cool. Such a great way to combine nature with learning. 51 is to go kayaking or canoeing. You can even bring a little picnic basket so when you're out on the water you can enjoy some snacks. 52 is to learn to play archery. I know in most places they have free archery in the park so be sure to look that up. Number 53 go to a pottery class. Number 54 is go to a sculpture class. And last but not least is to go camping at a historical spot. Pretty much anything that you do outside, you wanna make sure that you can learn from the environment that you are in. And by going somewhere that has some history to it, you get to learn and be in nature at the same time. Okay, so that is it for my whole list. That was so many things. Hopefully you guys liked these ideas and you liked the way that I incorporated nature with learning. And if you have any ideas, any activities that you would like to share, feel free to drop a comment below so everyone can see it. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you guys in the next one.